The time waveform is affected by what sample rate you have. And what I have is a microphone attached to a table as well as an accelerometer. And I'm going to hit a tuning fork and produce a tone. And at this point, we can see that our sample rate is set for 48,000 samples per second. Um, so that's a very reasonably high sample rate. We're going to start with that sample rate. I'm going to hit a tuning fork which is 512 hertz. On the time waveform we see a rather nice sine wave and in the FFT below frequency waveform we see a large peak there. If we put a um, cursor on that say a max cursor, we're going to see what kind of value uh, we're getting. Let me hit that tuning fork again. And it's giving us a 513. So this tuning fork, labeled 512, is pretty close. Our software is indicating 513. What's interesting is if I touch the table, you might be able to pick it up on the audio here, um, it'll resonate the whole table and the accelerometer attached to the table will also sh show a recording. All right, so the table picks up a vibration there also, uh, 513. What happens if we have a lower sample rate? Let's pick something ridiculously low. Let's go to say a um, thousand or thousand twenty-four. Um, so a thousand twenty-four would actually be double our five twelve. Let's see what happens when we hit uh, the tuning fork now. What kind of signal uh, is going to get represented in our waveform? What you're noticing is in the time waveform basically a bunch of triangles. Definitely not a nice smooth sine wave. You'll see in the frequency waveform, right at the end you'll be able to pick up a peak of that 512. Um, but our main point here, 510, okay, main point is that our waveform, our time waveform is not representing what is really happening. And that's because we have too low of a sample rate. In fact, if we went lower, we'll pick another value, uh, okay, it's 375, let's see what happens. Perhaps you can predict what's going to happen. We're getting really nothing. We're just getting a flat line. Um, we do not have sufficient samples to pick up the real signal of the tuning fork. So it's very important that you pick more sample rates that, than less. In fact, the Nyquist theorem says you have to take greater than double the frequency range that you're looking at. If I'm looking at a 512 tuning fork, I have to have more than 1024 to get a reasonable representation. So we're going to pick something higher than that. Let's pick, uh, let's go uh, a little lower. Let's go to uh, 1875. Let's pick that one see uh, what kind of waveform we're going to get with 1875. All right, so we're getting not a nice smooth sine wave, but it's not triangular anymore. All right, so we're getting an improvement. We still, we're getting a 513 on the frequency, but we are not getting the smoothest curve yet. So let's try one more um, between where we were at. We were at 48,000. Let's pick uh, yeah, 
10,000 sounds good. Let's see what happens at 10,000 sample rate. And there we have a much nicer, smooth sine wave again. And if I touch it to the table, that accelerometer is picking up the values as well. One last time, I'll hit it. Um, I'll try to touch it to the table without my fingers touching the table. I think I've been damping it a little bit. Time waveform on the microphone. Time waveform on the acceleration. Nice and smooth sine wave there. And I'm going to continue holding the microphone uh, by the microphone. You'll still pick up on the FFT that uh, 513, 512, and I can't hear the sound anymore, but it's still there until I touch the tines with my finger and that'll dampen it up. Ready, set, touch. <laughs> 